For those of you who are new around here, this is our engine that we're going to be putting in our Raptor aircraft. It's a new experimental aircraft and this is a, uh, sitting on the test stand in the back of our shop right now. And it's a 3 litre uh, TDI Audi diesel engine with a compound turbo setup. And we have a uh, 76 inch prop on there running a reduction drive at 1.43 to 1. And for those of you who have been following along, I just wanted to show you, not only do I have those uh, concrete anchors there holding the test stand down, I also have some cargo straps there to those uh, big steel bolsters that we have at the side of the door, so this thing is not going to go anywhere even if for some reason those anchors come loose. And before we get into the engine running, I wanted to give an update on what's happening with the reduction drive here. So this is it in CAD. And uh, if I just uh, isolate it just to the upper um, drive there, you'll see uh, this is basically how it's composed. And so at the top there, this is where the oil feed comes in. This is on the existing setup and it goes through the housing there. And if I hide that, you can see there's like an intermediate shuttle there. And those uh, black things there, those are the O-rings and they were the ones that were leaking there. I and mean, I've now proven that um, because we don't have any leaks more, we bypass those by basically blocking off any feed to those with an O-ring on the top thing. Uh, maybe, anyway, if I show you uh, how that looks, um, this shuttle basically was designed to just deliver oil into the center of the prop shaft. So it has a single channel in the middle that feeds the oil and uh, it was allowed to sort of run out and um, come out to the oil seals. And so this is the new design we're putting now. So it, it has uh, three channels in it, one center one that's actually feeding the oil. And then from there, it, the oil can actually split out uh, left and right. And this is a cross-sectional view here. Uh, so the oil can split left and right and end up in the recovery channels. So basically it'll flow into this channel here um, from that top feed. And then from there, it'll go into the prop shaft through the two holes that are in the shaft. And then it'll squeeze through very tight opening here in between the shaft and this shuttle and come into these recovery channels. And this is even before it gets to the oil seals that are on the outside edges of this. And then you can see there's drain holes there that'll run through and then that'll basically um, be a drain recovery in the main housing that'll run back to the sump. So this is similar to how Continental does it on their engine. So we're gonna be machining this part soon and they'll be replacing the old one and we'll see how that goes. And with limited interruption, I'm just going to let you watch uh, this Friday afternoon's run and we'll talk about it uh, once it's done.
well that's the most effective building exhaust fan ever so here's the plot from that run and I've marked out the point at which we kind of really hit maximum power there where the wastegate on the second turbo had pretty much opened up full and as you can see I got about 43.5 uh, pounds of boost there so you subtract the 14.1 of ambient there and we're getting about uh, 29.4 actual pounds of boost um, and as you can see through there the engine RPM was 34.55 uh, fuel flow was 16 gallons an hour. Temperatures were still coming up um, on the oil and such. But anyway, I've taken those numbers and I've put them into this spreadsheet that I've had for a little while now. So there's the RPM in there and I've put the boost in and I've put the temperatures in there. And this um, you know spreadsheet is nice enough to give me uh, some you know interesting numbers out of the end of it. And this is a spreadsheet that's used for you know calculating turbo sizes and such. So it's fairly reliable. Um, in terms of the numbers that it produces obviously it's not 100 percent accurate but it's going to give us a pretty good indication of what we're seeing coming out of the engine and the one that really matters here is the one for diesel fuel so this is uh, 351 horsepower is what we were seeing there and subsequently that's uh, 534 foot pounds of torque and because we're running a 1.43 to 1 reduction uh, we end up at the prop with 760 foot-pounds of torque and if you compare that with a Continental TSI 0550 uh, 350 horse at 2700 uh, RPM ends up with about 680 foot-pounds of torque so we're basically up there with what that engine's doing so pretty happy about that and we still have room for improvement because I'd like to get it up to 3800 RPM maximum um, and the way to do that is um, somehow to get a little bit more boost, which I don't really want to do, or either that um, switch out the prop for something that doesn't have quite as much pitch or not as much diameter. And we should be able to get closer to 400 horsepower, I think. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy watching this and uh, you know, stay tuned. There's more, be more videos coming out in the progress of the engine. And as always, share this with your friends and thanks for watching.